Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today we're going to be doing some fret end dressing on this neck. Uh, and we're going to test out a variety of different options here for what we can do with this. Now, what we're really kind of testing is do-it-yourself versions of the fret end dressing files versus actual ones. But we have a couple different actual ones, a couple different do-it-yourself versions. Let's test them out and see what happens. So in case anybody's confused about what's going on here, we've already leveled the frets on this fretboard. This is an aftermarket neck, so usually they need that sort of thing, depending on where you get them. Uh, this one didn't need a whole lot, but you know, a little bit. So we did that, and then we did our fret crowning. So all of these frets are nicely crowned now, so there's a nice spot for the string to intonate. And I've already sanded on the edges here, and made sure that I don't have any fret ends sticking out, any fret sprout that can cut your hands when you're trying to play quick and all of that. So it's feeling pretty comfortable, but we can make it better, we can make it feel better, and we do that by rounding the ends of the frets. So after you level, you kind of end up with this sharp edge a little bit. It's not too bad on this one because it was a minor leveling, but still. We've got to do that, that part next. Now there are a couple different options. Let's explore what those are. Let me first start by saying, and, and this is maybe a bit of an exaggeration, but there are two different schools of thought on this. Uh, some people like to create a nice rounded fret going this way as well as around the outside. Um, so that it's got an angle and some like to create more of a ball on the end so that the fret goes kind of vertical on the side and is just rounded off for comfort. What you prefer is up to you. Uh, I guess the justification for the ball is avoiding having the string coming off the edge. If that's something that you struggle with, maybe consider that option. That's kind of what I like to do. Um, but either way, these, all of these options work for any of the above. Let's talk about what methods we're gonna test. And by methods, I mean tools. So let's start with the professional options. We have uh, the fret end dressing file from Crimson Guitars. I'll give you a closer look here. So this is a nice thin file. It's perfectly smooth on the front and back and the sides are not smooth. They are the part that files. Pretty nice little piece of equipment. This is purpose-built from Crimson for doing this. While we're talking about Crimson Guitars, we also have their 3N file. This is actually um, designed for fret crowning from them, but can be used for fret end dressing. So uh, yeah, we'll check that as it compares to the other one, and you guys can determine if you're buying the Crimson tools, whether you think you need both, or maybe the, just this guy. Pretty versatile tool there. And we'll talk about the relative merits as we go. Uh, this is the fret and dressing tool from Hosco. This is their number two, but it comes in a set of three from Solo Music Gear. Uh, these are the ones that you guys have seen me use the most probably. And I'll mention this now, if you are looking for these Solo Music Gear, I have a link in the description to them. If you buy it through there, it helps me out. You will have seen this in a couple of my videos, my make your own crowning tool for cheap um, video and my recent comparison of different crowning tools. So this is my kind of do it yourself tool with the flat walnut bottom and the two 45 degree angles with sandpaper. And finally, and I'm not kidding here, really, the I spent all my money on parts and can't afford tools option. This is a popsicle stick and this is masking tape. Then I think you'll be surprised what we can accomplish with this. Now, if I'm being honest, and I might as well, cause you guys will call me on it if I try and lie to you. It's gonna be a little tough, I think, for me to capture the specifics in the camera of how our finished product looks here. but. Let's demo these all and, and you know, I'll do my best to show you how the actual fret end looks at the end, but I'll also describe it. So let's kind of do them, I think, in the order that I presented them. So we've got the crimson fret end dressing file, the crimson uh, three corner, our Hosco option. My apologies, I forgot a Stumac option. This is a diamond file with smooth edges, pretty straightforward. So let's put that in there too. And so the first four will be our professional purchased tools. Then we've got our do-it-yourself crowning file. And finally, this crap. Okay, let's get started. So this guy is very small and easy to control. This is the fret end dressing tool from Crimson. Very smooth edge. That's the important part. Now on all of these, you have at least a smooth edge. There are diamond files that you can get that you can, you know, round over metal with, but that don't have a smooth edge on them. Those will gouge your fretboard. And in fact, if you're relatively new to this, I highly recommend that you tape off your fretboard, okay? Now I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna do it because I'm, well, one, not new to this, and two, I'd actually kinda like to compare the relative safety of these options. 
So I'm coming over the top like this. This is very easy to control. And I can come around at a couple different angles. And I can tell you the size of this is really nice because it makes it very easy to work with. That smooth edge, you know, between that and how small this is, it's a pretty safe option. So we can do this job fairly quickly and get a nice round. And we'll take a look at that after. Now this file is a little bit bigger and a little more aggressive. It can still be done. It still has this smooth side, but because this is rounded, you're more liable to bump over the edge of your fret. And you just have to be more careful. You see when I do it with this, I actually have a finger on top, more contact points with the tool, just in an effort to be as careful as possible here, because I don't want to damage anything. <laughs> This is, a, this is a nice fretboard and it's being used for a project. So I'm gonna go through and to the extent that I need to, I'll touch all of this up after. Now this is a little quicker, but this file is frankly too aggressive. And when we take a look at that fret edge, hopefully, I don't know if my camera will do it, but hopefully you'll be able to see there are actually some noticeable scratches there. So I think the answer to the initial question, do you need to get both of these if you're doing that? Yes, you need this, the finer one. This guy is going to leave some scratches and they're going to be tough to take out. Now the Hosco model has a couple interesting things about it. This whole large back face of it, it's fairly wide, it's about an eighth inch wide, is smooth ground. So very easy to control, no chance of damage from that. The sides are files, so you can do your fret rounding this way and it's, yeah, it's a nice option. Uh, it's safe, so if you bump back and forth over, it's not a big deal because you do have that big ground area. But we also have a hollow ground center section that you can actually use to round off that top a little bit. And that's, uh, that's a nice little touch, especially if you want to angle down the end of your fretboard. I do like that hollow ground section. That's why you'll have seen me use this one the most. This is, for me, the easiest option. And it's fairly quick, so I'm done there. Looks good. Stumac. One, two, three, four, here we go. Uh, again, safe edges, that's the important part. Um, diamond file right up to the edges, so you do have to be careful, but that's fine. This one's fairly easy to control. It's a little bigger. It's not as easy to control as the Crimson one. The handle is much crappier than the Crimson one that's got a really nice wooden handle that makes it a little easier to hold. Uh, all in all, not as big a fan of this, of this particular file. And uh, yeah, that's why you pretty much never see me use it. It does create a nice, smooth, fine finish though. And I think it may come in a pack of two with a, uh, a more aggressive one. So that's good nice. Let's move on to the do-it-yourself options. So we're on fret five here. The first of my do-it-yourself options you might be familiar with. You can put two different sandpapers on here for fine and smooth. That's nice. This thing is, well, actually pretty easy to control. Something, <laughs> for some reason, when we make the jump to this size of item, it becomes easier to control because you can kind of get your hand around it. So this is actually pretty effective. Uh, I like it. I'm gonna use only my smoother piece of paper here. I have two. I had one that was a little more coarse to get the crowning done quicker, and then one to kind of do the finishing work on it. The thing about this is you have to be careful not to sand too far back. So yeah, the, the worry with this is that you're gonna create kind of a rounded angle that goes a little too far back, but it worked. It's creating a nice round. You just do have to be careful those 45 degree angles make that a little harder as well. All right, so this brings me to the moment that for no particular reason you've probably been waiting for, the popsicle stick and whatnot. Um, so I'm gonna take just a small chunk of sandpaper here that I've got and I'm gonna wrap it over my popsicle stick. And what I want is basically this. I want the sandpaper right up to the edge but not going over the edge. Okay, and then I'm just gonna take two little pieces of masking tape and pin this in place. One right over the end. And again, the only thing you need to really be careful of here is don't have sandpaper going over the edge. Make sure you've got just wood there, but make sure it's close to the edge so that you can make proper contact with the fret. 
Okay, so that's what we're looking for. Unfortunately, my piece isn't big enough to quite get there on the other side, but that's fine. So we'll just go in like this, the same way we have been. Get that right up to the edge. There we go. Carefully. And what I'll say right now is uh, I, don't, I don't have one, but rather than trying to do this by making one, you can just use uh, a fingernail file. So go to Walmart into the, the section with all the, the whatever it is, grooming slash makeup and whatnot, and get yourself a fingernail file, and then you'll be fine. I'm just moving this paper down to the other side so I can do the other side now. All right, let's see if I can give you a look at these now. All right, it's difficult for me to tell in the viewfinder um, how well you can actually see this, so I'll describe it. They all look good. This one is the, the first crimson one. It looks, it looks nice. That was easy to manipulate. You saw it. If we move over here, this one's got some scratching in it that I'm going to have to take out. Uh, that three-corner file was just too aggressive, to put it bluntly. The Hosco file, uh, that one was nice and fine, did what we needed it to, very easy to control, just like the first crimson file, and had that nice round in the center, so that was helpful. Um, this guy was the Stumac file. I'm not a big fan. It certainly does the job, though. No, no real problems with it. I just don't find it as, as efficient or effective or safe as the others. This guy was my, three, my crowning file that I made, um, or sanding block, rather. It worked fine, but it was a little big, which made it difficult to see what I was doing. Really, I had to feel my way around here. There's more risk of putting a larger angle into it just because of the size of the tool and the way it's set up. And then this was my popsicle stick, um, which probably should have been a fingernail file, but anyway. It gets the job done very slowly, pain in the butt to set up, but it can work. And, uh, and my, it's not free, but it's pretty darn close. All right, guys, I hope that helps, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions about any of these tools, let me know. Uh, I think you probably got a pretty good sense of what I think of them here. And if you have any thoughts on any of these, drop them in the comment section below. I'd be happy to hear them. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. It helps me out. And remember to subscribe so you can see how this project comes out and, uh, yeah, all my other stuff. As always, have a good one. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.